Our guest in this segment is a Hardy County commissioner. He played football at uh, uh, Moorfield High School and is currently a county commissioner in Hardy County and running for treasurer. Stephen Sheetram is our guest here. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, yes. Good morning, Rob, Bill, and Maria. Great to see you guys. And you guys are right. Very beautiful morning uh, where I am in Baker, West Virginia. Beautiful Baker, West Virginia. I have 57 degrees right now. The sun is shining. So, yeah, but really great to be with you guys. Well, great to have you with us. I told a little bit of your story. And when you were playing football there, I think you were just before you were telling me you were just before Alan Fiddler turned Moorfield into a dynasty. But I'm going to guess that you probably played against David Walker's East Hardy teams a few times. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And so my wife actually uh, graduated from East Hardy one year before me there. Uh, my wife, who, uh, Rachel, who I've been married to for 24 years now. Uh, but, yeah, we did play those teams. So, you know, of course, um, Dave Walker came back to Martinsburg this year. Um, so you guys have some great excitement there. Um, but, yeah, we did play against those teams for sure. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Stephen, did you play football at Shepherd? No, I didn't, no. Um, my high school years were the end of it for me for football. But um, we do have several um, – there's a, a really good uh, young man who came out of East Hardy last year, a really great football player and athlete and student um, who was playing for Shepherd this year as a freshman. Um, but, no, I didn't. I didn't continue, continue with football after high school. Stephen, let's talk about your political career. When did you first dabble in politics? My first dabble into politics has been recently, so I didn't immediately, you know, upon, certainly upon graduation from high school or even graduation from college, I did have aspirations, and I had, you know, I had thought, especially as I was going through college at Shepherd University, that I would, I would run for political office at some point, but I waited because I had a family, had a career, and I mean, I was involved on boards, of course, and involved in things, but um, I didn't run for political office. So I ran in the 2020 election, was elected November of 2020, and began serving January 1st, 2021 as county commissioner in Hardy County. Uh, Stephen, you're a financial advisor, I believe, uh, uh, and and the financial advisor lends itself, I would think, to treasure. Uh, is that some of the thinking that you that you uh, you looked at? Okay. Yes, I, I think that's a great point. Uh, I think you're completely right. So, um, following uh, my graduation from Shepherd University, I went on to Wake Forest University. My background is in finance. I uh, Received an MBA from Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I uh, concentrated in finance and entrepreneurship. And immediately after graduation, um, I began. Wor I worked for a couple of uh, larger financial firms as a financial advisor initially, and then I stab established my own financial services firm, Legacy Financial LLC, uh, and that's been about since 2010. That I've owned and operated that, but financial advising most certainly lends itself to a position of state treasurer. I was looking at other treasurer races around the country, one in particular in Louisiana, and I'm, and I was just reading, you know, reading current current issues facing uh, state treasurer's office around our nation. Recently, I was reading this, and I know that there was a financial advisor running running in that. Because financial advising and finance in general, but especially financial advising, teaches you things about um, diversification, which is something our state needs. I know in our county, uh, we're always – that's one of the goals for our county is diversification. It's also one of the goals within our state because – I've been, uh, you know, I've attended several conferences recently. I, I, I attended a conference recently um, that was put on by BREC, and, and that has to do with communities, re building resilient uh, communities, especially ones who have focused in one area, like, for example, West Virginia, that would be coal. Uh, for decades, we had a great focus on coal. Probably what was needed during that time is that we 
establish some type of trust fund or something that w- that could uh, provide a means of diversifying our economy. We didn't do that. We, we are suffering from that now, and we're working to diversify, I hope. Uh, but if they, you know, diversification, which financial advising, that's one of the basic principles, diversification. Most people, that's what they need. They need a long-term diversified portfolio for the average investor that's that's what is most needed that's the finding that's the foundation for your investment decision but yeah it I, absolutely i agree with you on that bill so Stephen, um uh, so your masters from wake forest did you spend the um the early part of your career in north carolina and then you came back to west virginia of course that's one of the things that Um, that our state leaders always talk about is getting young people either to stay here or to, um, to return here. So I'm sort of curious as to, as to how you, um, came back or always knew you were going to, um, going to, uh, stay in Hardy County. Sure. No, that's a great question. Um, I'm one of those stories. So I, I went, you know, for school and I did have a family at the time. Um, my wife, you know, went with me as we um, traveled there. I also had my oldest son. Uh, and then we had our youngest son while I was going to school at Wake Forest. Uh, we just went for school there. I just went for school there. I didn't begin my career there. I did begin my career in Winchester, Virginia, um, in financial advising, and then over time was able to move back here to West Virginia. But that is what we have wanted to do all along, and that is what our state leadership continues to talk about. It's what I actually am continuously talking about as well. I was in um, Montgalia County over this past weekend, and one of the points I brought up, because it's been brought up in several uh, you know, forums and work since sessions I've been involved in as a county commissioner, our state and I know I'm speaking. I know I'm speaking largely to a county where there's population growth, but huge percentage, huge parts of our state do not have population growth, and I think that's that's a huge issue that overshadows West Virginia. We have a population problem, and and a population problem is a fundamental problem. We have to bring young people back to West Virginia, and people in general. We have to attract them to West Virginia, meaning. We, and certainly from the political side, we have to have policies in place that will attract people to come to West Virginia because if you don't have population, you know, companies don't move into an area because there's no workforce to support them. And I know that's one thing we're working on in Hardy County. We have had some successes there, and we have moderate growth, and we want to continue along that track. But for many counties in West Virginia, that's, that's a huge issue. But, yes, uh, we went – you know, we went to um, North Carolina, which we did love that state. North Carolina is a great state, um, but we, you know, came back, <clears throat> starting our career in Virginia, and then eventually were able to move back to Hardy County, West Virginia. If I could real just quick stay on the subject a second, Marie, and I'll go right back to you. Is that Stephen? If you are successful in your bid. Uh, to win the treasurer's spot in West Virginia. And we're going to have some different constitutional officers in there uh, next term around for sure. I would encourage you, if you're successful in in getting growth in the entire state, to also develop growth policies because right now the state has no idea how to handle growth because it hasn't had it in a long time. But Berkeley County, and to an extent Jefferson County, have. And Berkeley County right now, from a growth perspective, is a disaster in terms of trying to get anywhere, right? Uh, because the roads, the state the state has no clue how to keep up road-wise with what's going on in Berkeley County because it doesn't have to deal with it in the rest of the state, and it's not used to knowing how to deal with it. Yes, that, that's a very, very good point, and I am glad you mentioned it. So in Hardy County, and I did, like, so it, – it's a key thing to think about. You know, growth is one thing. Managing growth is quite another. Um, in Hardy County, for instance, we ha- we've had county planning since the mid-1970s. Um, now, these are huge issues that, that face local county planning officers. Uh, we've dealt with several recently, and I can go into more detail about several of them or maybe even a later show, but there, there are 
there are real issues that face county planning offices because uh, a county – and I, I think this would speak to what you're talking about. I mean, you know, you need to have things in place, at least a framework in place, and that's what we're trying to do in Hardy County for handling growth. In Hardy County, it's only been moderate growth, you know, maybe around just under 3%. Over the past 10 years, that's moderate, and I mean, we would probably want to reach for just a bit more than that. But it is still some growth, and we're, you know, we're trying to be on the forward-looking um, side of that growth and plan for our future. And that's why we have planning, which we've been very successful in. It we do feel at times we um, we are in a continuous argument with our with state with the state on this because there West Virginia is a very state centric state meaning in West I was reading the statistics on this and it's kind of amazing West Virginia is within the top five uh, and I'm I think top three um, states in our nation that focus government at the state level and give very very little control to local governments. And um, that's one thing we that's one thing we work on in Hardy County is trying to trying to um, cause our state to pay attention to our unique needs and allow us to plan for our future. But uh, you you raised a very good point because Berkeley County, with growth and to some extent Jefferson wrestles with this issue. I'm I'm aware of it. Stephen, in your uh, your campaign, your Facebook, you let, uh, you mentioned three platforms: growth, transparency, stewardship. Under growth, I was struck by the one thing you mentioned. The only thing you mentioned was a jumpstart savings plan. Obviously, you think that is 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 a key, uh, but why that one as opposed to not mention others? Well, I'd like what that plan is saying. So it, because what I want to see for people is more freedom and flexibility. So, for example, I went to college. Uh, my wife went to college. Uh, my oldest son right now is a first-year cadet at the United States Military Academy at West Point. So that was the path for us. And then my youngest son is a rising 10th grader. Um, the Jumpstart Savings Plan, though, gives flexibility for people who are going to work in the trades to also save for their careers. The reason I like it is because it gives flexibility. Now, I mean, in the state of West Virginia, only 32% of our population has top college degrees. However, I do think we have many people who are interested in the trades, and I think there's a huge need. There's, there's a... Uh, there is a need for more supply in this area, like for people who are working in the trades. And that's what this Jumpstart pl Savings Plan will do for people. So it was enacted into law in the 2021 legislative session, became available to users in mid-2022, and it would allow people who want to sa save for the trade, say, for instance, plumbing or cosmetology or you know anything – anything related to a trade field, they can begin putting away money and it can grow tax-free, and then they can spend that on tools, equipment, um, certifications, you know, licensing, things like that. So for me, the reason I wanted to mention that plan in particular is because I think it is a plan that is, um, that is within the guidelines of uh, policies that I would see that I would want to see put in place in West Virginia because flexibility and freedom for people, um, and I think that is an attractive policy to attract people to our state. So, quick question, Stephen: How did you make this decision? Obviously, you believe your skill set is well aligned with running for the the treasurer's post, but. Um, you know, statewide office, obviously there's an opportunity there with the, um, the current office holder running for another office, but, um, making the, the leap. And I, I would venture a guess that it is a leap to go from County commission to a statewide office treasurer. How, how'd you come to that decision and what things in your life sort of, um, made that, made that happen? That's a really, really excellent 
question. And anyone who is going to, as you say, make that leap from county commissioner to statewide office, which is very different, you know, the campaign is very different in, in those two areas. Um, okay, the number one reason is that I think I w- I'm supposed to do it. I have no idea if I'll win or lose this race. I think that West Virginia is in, in the middle of great change, though. I want to be part of that change, and I want to be part of the discussion that takes place leads to that change. I think there is a duty uh, for people to run, and there is a need um, for us in West Virginia to have people to step up and be good public servants. I think we have a need for that. and. At the very basic level, that's why I'm doing it, because I believe I'm supposed to do it. And that has nothing to do with I think I'm going to win it or win or lose. It has to do with I want to be putting my ideas out there. I want to be part of the discussion that takes place as we uh, as we look toward the future in West Virginia, and that's the reason I'm running in this race. I mean, it is a leap, but – I began preparing myself for a leap like this. So just I want to point out a few things. I'm as from my position as county commissioner, I'm involved in statewide boards. I'm on the West Virginia Emergency Medical Services Advisory Council board. That's a statewide board and members of that board are appointed by the governor. Um, I serve on that board. I'm also on a national board. Uh, My county is involved in NACO, which is the National Association of Counties. Uh, I'm appointed by the president of NACO, which NACO represents uh, between two and 3,000 counties across our nation. And I'm part of the Energy, Environment, and Land Use Committee as vice president. Uh, vice chair of the um, energy subcommittee. So you you begin working and seeing um, seeing situations that are taking place in other states and in other counties across our state through that process, and you see that there needs to be very very vibrant discussion, a very thorough discussion of what's taking place in West Virginia. And for me, I want to be part of that process. So. For me, it is it, – okay, here's one thing I would say about that, and it, it does go to the heart of why someone would run for office. So one thing that I want to be sure to point out, for me, if someone just needs to win the office, I would say you shouldn't run for the office. Like you should want to be part of the process leading up to you know whoever the eventual winner would be. And, I mean, you do run – run to win most certainly when you run for for political office but you also better enjoy the process of it i mean i have a family i have other things in my life i I enjoy doing and i give myself to them but this the reason i'm running i think it is needed in our state to have not only young people i'm 46 years old i'm you know i mean uh, uh not tremendously young not tremendously old um but I see that things are needed for the future health of our state. I want to be part of that conversation, and I think things that I've been involved in do give a unique perspective and unique experience leading to this position. I'm I'm a working county commissioner right now. I'm not a I'm not you know a professional politician. I'm not every day or every year running for political office. I'm a working county commissioner. I think we need that. I think I think that at a most basic level there is a desire for some new ideas in West Virginia and some things that will lead to change. I want to be part of that discussion and part of that process. And secondly, I believe it is needed. I think probably more people need to need to step up from local areas to run for some of these offices. Uh, and that's, and so in a nutshell, that's why I'm running for the office. Stephen, let me go back to your platform and some specifics. Uh, uh, the second plank is transparency. Every candidate running for office mentions transparency. You've taken it one step farther. You have proposed an initiative called Project Mountaineer. Uh, how do you? How would Project Mountaineer uh, address the problem of transparency? So, yeah, very great question. 
Um, the Project Mountaineer is it's what our county has done. This was a project uh, that was it, it's the auditor's transparency program. And when I first became commissioner, uh, there were a number of counties uh, around the state that have began adopting this, um, and our county has now. And we're working to have all of our information up publicly, which I wish this would have already taken place, you know, long ago. But you need, you know, you have that's part of working as a county commissioner. You cl collaborate with other office holders within your county, and you know, it's a it's a work in progress. So. We've Project Mountaineer. What, what is Project yeah. Mountaineer? So Project Mountaineer is, and it's not a new proposal by me. It's already been proposed by the state auditor's office. And what it does is, is it allows the financials from counties to be put on the OpenGov website for the state so that every voter can see the decisions, the financial decisions that are being made by counties. Good. Okay. Stephen Citron, our guest here on the program. He is a county commissioner in Hardy County and a candidate for treasurer in the state of West Virginia. Stephen, your resume uh, certainly indicates someone who's been uh, very busy and uh, successful in his career. I think you've got a great attitude toward what you're trying to accomplish, and I wish you the best of luck going forward, sir. We look forward to speaking with you more as Election Day uh, gets closer. Thank you. Really appreciate all the great questions and the conversation from each of you. Really appreciate it, Rob, Bill, and Maria. Really, really great to talk with you guys this morning. Thank you, Stephen. Same. Thank you, Stephen.